This is Mario, and let's learn how to play Voyages. Voyages is a roll and write game. That means you roll dice and you write on a sheet of paper. Voyages also provides digital tools so you can play it online with others. It supports solo play as well as up to 100 players playing using the same dice rolls. Simply put, you are a captain set upon adventure on the ocean and you will roll some dice, make some choices and draw some lines and have a ton of fun while doing it. Let's get started by looking at the wind rows on the left side of the map. The wind rose has two rings. The inner ring represents the numbers one through six, which are the different sides of a D6 die. They also represent the cardinal direction on the hexagonal map. The outer ring of the wind rose represents the 16 rounds in solo play. While you can go more than 16 rounds in multiplayer, you can also go less. There are triggers for the win condition. When playing any round, you will roll your three dice, select one for move direction, one for move distance, and one for duty. Let's see an example. Just left of center of the map is the start island, where you will begin your adventure. In our example, we're gonna choose the die two for the northeast direction the three die to go three hexes, and the six die will go into the bottom left and marked off under duties, which we will cover soon. Notice that we cross over an icon. Because we did not end our turn on that icon, we do not acquire that item. Only if you end your turn on that icon, do you then acquire it. In this scenario, we've swapped duty and direction. The direction will be 6 to the northwest, and distance will still be 3, and the duty marked off is 2. It does land on an icon, and so we will have an action to collect that icon. Move, duty, then action. So let's jump in to duties and see how those work. One of your die are always used to mark off your duties. The only exception is if you've already marked off all available slots for the number that you've chosen for your duty. If there are none available, you do not mark anything. However, otherwise, you just simply place an X anywhere that you'd like to represent the number that you selected. You select only one square per die. When you cross it off, you are starting to build out a crossed off row or column. If you ever complete crossing off that row or column, you can be awarded a prize listed at the end. In this example, we've been awarded an anchor which represents a sailor. The best opportunity is the center row, which has a prize of a star and any type of cargo you wish. We can also cross off two rows at once. In this example, We've gotten the same five, but because we had the one and three checked off, we've additionally earned a sailor, which is the anchor icon. Remember, you move by choosing direction and distance, you do your duty, you claim your rewards, and then you do the action based off of where you ended your turn. I mentioned that sailors use the icon of an anchor. Each game, you start with six sailors, represented by the boxes drawn around at the top of the 15 sailor options. If you acquire a new sailor, you would draw a box over the next available. If you land on an icon which looks like a goblet, that makes the sailor heroic. And if your sailor is not crossed off, you can circle the goblet, and that is now a, an heroic sailor. Sailors can be used to alter the rolls of your dice to make it more favorable. When you use a sailor, you simply cross it off. This is called exhausting a sailor. You can exhaust as many sailors as you have available. So for instance, if you wish to move a sailor by two digits and you don't have any heroics, you could cross off two sailors and move it plus one, plus one. 
Here's our previous turn. Instead of going past that anchor, we want to go ahead and make sure we land on it. So we use a sailor to do a plus or minus one to any die, and we change the three. Our distance is only going to be a two. So for us, we have a two of direction, a two of distance, and a duty of six. That means that we will mark off the six in our duty, and we'll mark off the sailor used, and then we will then collect our action, which is gaining a new sailor, drawing that box. Note that when I cross off the sailor, it can be any of them. You do not have to use or exhaust your sailors in any particular order. However, when you add sailors, make sure you do them in order because of the bonus available for a star, which we'll talk about later. On the board, you'll see icons for sailors and for heroes. Landing on those will award you those particular items. You'll also notice that there are black settlements that also have the sailor icon. A settlement has special rules. It works as a settlement to sell cargo. It also gains you a sailor. If you use both or either of these actions, that settlement is used and cannot be used again. You should cross it off. But you can choose to not use that settlement if you wish and you do not gain a sailor, nor do you sell cargo, and it can be used again in a future time. There are a variety of islands on the map. This includes your start island, the gold islands, and your settlements. All islands have a specific rule that if you run into an island, regardless of the value of your distance, you must stop your movement when you reach an island. So if you were to roll a six, but you only had two squares and then you ran into an island in that particular direction, then you must stop on that island. As an additional benefit, if that island has multiple hexes, they're counted as one unit. Therefore, when you leave, you may depart from either hex of that island on your next round. Let's mention a few other items on the map, specifically looking at the dread on the far right side of the map. The dread is a special point that also stops your movement when you run into it. It is recommended to avoid the dread unless you have two heroic sailors that are not exhausted. That is what's required to defeat the dread and score points at the end of the game. Additionally, there are unexplored regions of the ocean on the edges and in the middle. There are seven of these and moving through or stopping in as many of these as possible nets you more points in the end. Finally, there are cargo icons. Any, fruit, spice, hide, and gem. Landing on them allows you to collect cargo. Let's talk about how cargo works. When you collect cargo, you circle the box of the appropriate cargo, or any one you wish if you get the barrel. If you get another one, you circle the next box, always filling from left to right. Remember those settlements we talked about? If you have any unsold cargo that are just simply circled, you can go ahead and sell them when you land on a settlement. You can do that in one of two ways. You can either sell one of each of your cargo, or instead you could sell all of a single type of cargo. If you end up selling the third cargo of any particular type, you will earn a star. When you sell cargo, you cross off that circle. And of course, you need to cross off or mark that settlement as used because you cannot use it again. I mentioned stars. Stars trigger the end game in a multiplayer setup, and they also are required to defeat the solo mode. There are two visible on the map in the top right by simply ending your turn on that star, you can acquire it. The dread, which is defeated by two heroic sailors when you come into contact with the dread space. And then you have sailors in the bottom right. When you acquire your sixth additional sailor, you automatically gain a star. For cargo, for selling your third cargo of a particular type, you cannot gain more than one star by the actions used in the cargo space. Finally, in the duty section, you can gain a star by completing that middle row Two final notes. One, 
Not only do islands and the dread stop your movement, but also the edge of the map. So, if your number exceeds the distance it takes to reach the edge of the map, your boat automatically stops in the last space. Furthermore, when using sailors to change die, you can roll over from, say, a 6 to a 1 or a 1 to a 6. But you cannot exceed the number 6 for your total value. Make sure to read the rules that are written and provided with the game and enjoy your voyage.